to become engaged in the middle of a war to a young naval officer who had no fortune and no expectation, you would indeed have been throwing yourself away. Oh, Captain Wentworth, this is my elder sister, Anne. We are acquainted. Really? But Anne has never said a word about it. Do not blame you, nor myself, for having been led by you. But nevertheless, I think very differently now from what I was persuaded to think eight years ago. I fear Somerset has unpleasant memories for him. There was once talk of an engagement to a girl in the county. He's never spoken of it, but his heart was quite broken, I believe. Now I understand him. He can never forgive me. He condemns me still for the past and is becoming now quite attached to another. I would never suppose that true constancy is known only by women. But the one claim I shall make for my own sex is that we love longest. When all hope is gone. I imagined myself indifferent to her when I was only angry and resentful. Too late I began to understand myself and her. Never, never have I met her equal in good sense or sweetness of character. She's, she's perfection itself. I've never loved any of her. We are talking now of Anne Elliot. Of course, who else? Miss Louisa is a very good, amiable sweet-tempered girl. Harville's sister was a very superior woman. A man cannot recover from such a passion. But such a woman, you are not. He does not. There would be a little marriage in that family if I were any judge. Certainly, if the rumors are to be believed. That is to say, the Admiral, Admiral Croft, has been confidently informed that everything is settled now in your family for a union between yourself and Mr. Elliot. You'll please thank the Admiral on my behalf. I must tell you that he is utterly misinformed. I bear this no longer. It is my soul. I'm half agony, half hope. Unjust I may have been. Weak and resentful I have been, but never inconstant. I offer myself to you again as a heart, even more your own than when you almost broke it eight years ago. I have loved none.